In this lesson, we're going to learn a technique that you can use to solve quadratic equations known as completing the square. In the previous lesson, we showed a general technique that you can use to solve any equation. We said that if you wanted to solve an equation, you first move all pronumerals to one side, find an equivalent expression with only one pronumeral, and then do the opposite steps in the opposite order. We also remarked that step 1 and step 3 were pretty easy, but step 2 is where most of the trouble lies. Now it turns out that if you're trying to solve equations that contain quadratics, step 2 is still going to be by far the hardest step. Now this technique still works just fine for quadratics, but in case you're unsure of what a quadratic is, a quadratic is just an expression that may contain x squared, as well as a normal x. For example, you could have something like 2x squared minus 3x plus 4 equals 0. Or you could have something like x squared minus 7 equals 0. Those are both quadratics. But the point is, if you want to actually solve quadratics, you need to form a perfect square from them. In case you don't remember the perfect square formula, let me show it to you. Now just to explain to you why this formula is so important here, I want you to notice that we want to find an expression that contains only one pronumeral. If you look at the right hand side of this expression, notice that there's an x squared and also an x, so there are two pronumerals. But the left hand side only contains one x, and that means it's going to get us from step 2 to step 3. Now I want you to remember that if you're going from the left hand side to the right hand side, we call that expanding. So therefore, if you're trying to go from the right hand side back to the left hand side, that would be factorizing. Now if you are factorizing, in general you're usually going to have these two terms, but you're going to need to add this term on somehow. Now to really make sense of this, I want you to remember that we actually got this expression over here by expanding out a square. So let me draw that square on. Okay, so I've drawn a square here, and I just want you to recall how we got this expression in the first place. In case you don't remember, you can watch the video where I derived it, just to see that it's very closely related to this square over here. Now, this side over here can be thought of as x, and this side over here can be thought of as a. And therefore this side is also going to be x, and this side is also going to be a. Now, if that's going to be the case, then this section over here is going to be x squared, since it's x times x. And then this section over here is going to be the same thing as a times x, or ax. And this one down here is also going to be ax. And that actually accounts for most of the square. This x squared here shows up here, and then you've got an ax plus ax, which is the same thing as 2ax. But then we just have this section over here, which is our missing section. And it's going to equal a squared, because this side is a, and this side is also a. Now, if you actually try solving a quadratic, you can always just draw this square over here to find out what this missing term is. But you can also do it another way. So the other thing you can do is, you can take this 2a over here, then divide by 2 to get a, then you can square it to get a squared, which is the missing term that we're after. It's up to you whether you want to use this sequence over here, or just to draw this picture and find out what this missing term is. Okay, but these steps wouldn't be worth very much to you if I didn't show you how to actually use them. So let's bring out an example and work through it together. So here, we'd like to solve for the values of x that make the following expression true. Well, the first thing to do is to actually move all of the pronumerals to one side. So we're going to keep these two on the left hand side, but we're going to move this minus 7 to the right hand side. So in order to move the 7 to the other side, remember that this negative sign will just turn into a positive sign when we move it over. So now that we've moved everything to one side, we're ready for step 2, which is to find an expression with only one pronumeral. Now as you can see, this looks exactly like this over here, but the 6 is sort of the same thing as the 2a. So in a sense, we need to complete the square over here to actually solve this particular expression. To find the term that I need to complete this square, 
I always opt to actually draw the square. So let me do that. This first term over here, the x squared, can fit over here. But this 6x can be broken up into two parts, which is the 3x over here and the 3x over here. So if that's the case, to make x squared, we have to multiply x by x. But to make this 3x over here, we have to multiply the same x by the number 3. And that means this number down here is also going to be 3. And that means this missing square over here is going to be what you get when you multiply 3 by 3. So that means this missing square is just the number 9. And that means if we see x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9, we can replace that for x plus 3 all squared. Just to remind you, this symbol over here means that the left and the right are equivalent. So anywhere you see this, you can always replace it for this. Okay, well, looking at this expression over here, it looks like the only thing we're missing on the left-hand side is this 9 over here. So what we're going to do is, we're going to add 9 to both sides of this equation. But then as we said, you can replace x squared plus 6x plus 9 for this term over here, which is x plus 3 all squared. Now at this stage, we can also see that 7 plus 9 is the same thing as 16, so we might as well replace that as well. At this point, we can see that we've converted this expression over here into one that only has one x, and therefore it should be really easy to perform step 3, which is to just do the opposite steps in the opposite order. The first thing to do is to take the square root of both sides. But don't forget the plus minus any time you do that. After this, we just remember that root 16 is the same thing as 4. And then to finish things off, we just have to move this 3 to the other side, where it will become negative. Okay, so we actually have two answers here. You have the positive case over here, and you also have the negative case. In the positive case, we've got x equals negative 3 plus 4, so therefore x equals 1. And in the negative case, we've got negative 3, negative 4 or x equal to minus 7. And then you come to one of the interesting facts about many quadratics. It is perfectly possible for more than one x to actually solve a quadratic. In this case, we can see that both x equals 1 and x equals negative 7 make this expression true. Now, because this expression over here is actually equivalent to this expression down here, it also turns out that there is no other value that makes this expression true. It's only 1 and minus 7. Now it turns out that you can repeat these steps to solve basically any quadratic you like. And this is going to be really important later as we try to solve them in general. Now just to make one final remark. Despite the fact that I basically always solve this with a square over here, you can also do it using this method that I talked about here. If you look at this value of 6, you can first divide it by 2 to get 3, and then you can square it to get this 9 over here. You can do either one depending on what you prefer. So therefore, no matter how you prefer to do things, you need to add 9 to both sides in order to solve this problem. But I think that just about completes the example I wanted to show you. In this lesson, we talked about how you can complete the square to solve quadratic equations. A quadratic equation is just an equation that, once simplified, contains an x squared. We said that in order to complete the square, you could just draw the square over here to find the missing part, or you can take the pronumeral of x, divide it by 2, then square it to get this a squared over here. In either case, the point of doing this is to change an expression like this one that contains two x's into an expression like this one that contains only one x. By doing that, you write the expression in terms of one pronumeral, which allows you to do step three here, which is to do the opposite steps in the opposite order. Now it turns out that we can solve absolutely any quadratic you like using this method over here. And in fact, this method is so general that we're going to use it to derive an equation called the quadratic equation that you can use to solve these quadratics in very little time. So therefore, you're going to definitely want to tune into the next lesson where we discuss how to actually derive this quadratic equation. But I think that just about completes everything I wanted to say about completing the square. So I'll see you next time where we talk about the quadratic formula. Thanks for watching another Trina video. If you want to say thanks, you got to show your friends. Or maybe you should just visit us at trina.org, where you can track your progress and have access to questions and heaps of other awesome stuff. Or maybe you should just like and subscribe. That works too. But either way, I'll see you next time.